One of the things that stops people from doing this is, is, is the cognitive bias and the business bias we have in time frame. So um, the first thing I've done, at least in my fund structure, is to eliminate a time frame. I think that, you know, you, you, you know, if you're trying to do this in a short term, it ain't going to happen. So what do I mean? So there, you know, in Silicon Valley, I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, the, the venture funds are typically 10 years and then yeah. they have the option to extend them to, you know, some go to 15 or whatever, 12 yeah. or 13, whatever it is. That's not the case. You don't, if, if no, I'm an investor. Perfect, well, we just set a permanent capital pool, perpetual capital. And, uh, you know, I figure that, uh, I, I, you know, look, I, I learned in Newfoundland that the, the, the best thing to do is just to learn from someone smarter than you. And uh, it seemed that Warren Buffett kind of figured this out, that, uh, you know, you know, having a permanent capital pool, we, we want to try to be a Berkshire Hathaway of, um, of venture capital and use early growth to create durable growth and build our moats around companies. Um, I want simple long-term compounding. I mean, just capturing value in a narrow window, that's that's nice, but I, I want I want the stuff that um, that that lasts. I mean, um, you know, I, I I mean, what what's what what have we created? If someone like you know does something and some other guy, you know, puts up a greater value and someone walks away with fifty, a hundred million. Well, that to me is risk transfer. That's not real value creation. Right. Well, and the the weird thing is, um, and I'm just seeing if I can uh, dig it out as we're talking. Uh, there was a story recently, uh, let me see where it was, about the fact that there really are no great new tech companies anymore, that everybody ends up getting acquired. Yeah, here it is. So it was on Vox.com. The headline of the article is, the end of the internet startup. We haven't had a major new technology company in more than 10 years. And the story goes on to talk about how, you know, companies are selling out and very few uh, tech companies want to go public anymore. And And so this this notion of uh, enduring value is kind of an interesting one. Uh, do you think we're just too short-term focused? Is that, is that what you're saying? I think we have long-term problems to solve and long-term issues and short-term timeframes. Absolutely. I think that, the, the, you, you know, you could take, I mean, it's part of the American culture. It's part of the plastic surgery. It's part of the Botox. It's part of the diets. It's part of, uh, it's part of our election cycle of four years. It's like, you know, if you want to solve real big problems, um, it ain't about, you know, um, iterate and fail fast. It's about sticking to it. It's about having a long view. It's about just ignoring the ebbs and flows um, and, and trying to solve real big problems. Two people out of MIT, Jason Ponton, the most recent um, editor of the MIT Tech Review, and Nicholas Negroponte, the, uh, the, the co-founder of the MIT Media Lab, uh, have two, stated, two very big thinkers. Yep. Yeah. And, and both stated much more eloquently than me. Like, you know, we have stopped trying to solve big problems. I mean, he said, he said like, you know, the great thing of, uh, of a great legend at of MIT, Marvin Minsky, who passed away last year, one of the fathers of artificial intelligence was he wanted to solve big problems. And he would say, you know, um, iter iterative product development and failing fast. Well, that's a freaking stupid idea. You know, like, you know, you know, if you are really trying to solve something big, you got to stick with it. You got to be patient. You're not trying to, you know, just a B test the heck out of everything. And, and I think the truth's in between, but